it's an honor to be here with Catapult Education and good evening everybody. Wonderful to be with you tonight and an honor to be here with my colleague Tanya Dunlap and uh, a little background about myself. I'm the CEO and founder of Next Level Practice and we are uh, the best in the world at creating happy teams that implement sustainable results specifically for general practitioners uh, all across the US, Canada and uh, in the Caribbean. And um, Tanya, I'm so grateful to be here tonight with you and um, super excited for tonight's session. Thank you, Gary. I'm also pleased to be here. I want to thank everybody for taking some time to learn about uh, the formula and the science behind a million dollar hygiene department. This course is special to Gary and I because it was through mutual dental offices um, that were doing really well with Perio Protect because they were implementing the next level uh, business methodology practice organization um, and all of the great things that you can get from next level practice. So it was out of that relationship um, with mutual offices that Gary and I met each other and we started talking and we decided to try to bring that success to other practices. So that's what tonight is about. It's a mix of uh, good business and good science and helping you all take your practice from where you are now, which is likely very good, and moving it even further beyond, and in some cases, better than you can imagine. Um, and I will uh, come back in, Gary, when we've got a second here. You bet. So some of the top questions uh, that you posted uh, and we've outlined our content to match is having detailed systems for implementation, uh, who's right for a perio, perio protect, um, the, the conversation around assisted hygiene, evaluating the success of a hygiene, um, how and when do you add in a hygienist, best way to compensate them, and how do we tackle no-show rate, and what's the best way to use a huddle. And so uh, we're going to uh, attack these and many, many more. Uh, you'll get uh, super value. Uh, Tanya and I do this in a day-long session, and we've just taken the best of the best and, and compressed it into uh, 50 minutes. So. Let's jump right in. So the three elements of a million dollar hygiene department are these three elements. You have to have a structured business model. So often, um, you know, we see people trying to implement systems on top of a model that doesn't hold everything together and it, it doesn't provide consistency and accountability and measures and all the elements. Uh, and we're gonna unfold that and unpack that a bit. You're gonna see how to build a business model. Uh, and then the uh, the confidence, the clinical confidence of oral systemic science. And Tanya's really my favorite geek at oral systemic science, and uh, really really allows us to understand it in a in layman's terms, so that uh, all practitioners can be confident. And then the conduit between the business model and the science is the patient education system. And we're going to unfold the five steps to uh, patient education, and we'll go deep inside one or two of those tonight. So. <clears throat> You know, you want to first look at, are you doing bloody prophies? Are you scraping teeth? Or do you have what we call the complete health hygiene driven practice where the mouth and the body um, are connected? The mouth is the gateway to whole body health. And, you know, where dentistry is going today is, you know, your drill fill PPO mill standard practice or a complete health practice where you're managing inflammation, managing bacteria. Uh, you're looking at airway. Um, and you're looking at the whole person. So you wanna just see where you're starting from. You know, is it, is it you know, profies or is it that you're a healthcare advocate to the patient? So you wanna to begin to un unfold that. So what is a complete health dental practice? Let's deepen it. So the purpose is on overall health, not just oral health. So, you know, one of the key things here is, do you look at a, a medical history form? Tanya, you know, like a, my favorite saying here is like when I used to go to a dental practice, that that was not one of the ones that we we coach i would always check off that i was pregnant and so often you know no one would ask me what trimester i'm in right so you know it's like that's a good indicator that if you're not looking at the medical history form tying it to the patient's condition and its past history you know you're you're mainly looking at at oral health and here's another deep position to look at are you a preventive care provider or a problem fixer and Here's how you'll know that. You know, we often hear a lot of practitioners say, well, I'm definitely pre preventive care. Well, maybe the dentist is, but the team isn't, or the hygienists aren't, or maybe some of the team is and the dentist isn't. Well, here's how you know. See, we found that professors and, 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 and your educators along the way in dental school really drilled down on finding the chief complaint and then asking you to fix that. So 
this is where this is the this is the line of demarcation are you a problem fixer or are you a preventive care practitioner well how you know is do you ask any variation of why are you here is anything hurting anything bothering you um you know what brings you in today you're giving all your power away and this is where the patient's now being educated that you are looking for symptoms and to have a million dollar hygiene department you want to be able to do the 95 percent of the procedures that are asymptomatic and if you're asking the question how you know why are you here or you know what's bothering you or do you have any pain those types of questions um, really you know perpetuate the patient saying do whatever my insurance covers because it doesn't hurt me i don't think i have a problem i don't think i need to fix it and it just perpetuates that darn spiral that we all you know have lived in and you can break that chain tonight and the treatment offer any offering is not dictated by insurance you know you can offer insurance but that's like a scholarship but your diagnosis and your treatment is not dictated whether somebody has insurance or not and there's an emphasis on patient education and patient empowerment really where you share intelligent things with intelligent patients so that they can make an intelligent decision and then um, really facilitating and collaborating with other practitioners so co-managing patients we have we were last thursday tanya and i were at the first um, dental office that's a preventive health care uh, facility combined with a cardiologist under one roof um, there's many different uh, pockets of interprofessional collaboration down in jacksonville they have a nutritionist a gym a, a dentist the md they're all in a collaborative uh, uh, group that meets once a week so there's you know you begin to uh, collaborate interprofessionally so you know here's the the main problem the main problem is you know half of america suffer suffers from gum disease now here's the thing about this you're going to learn about a way to track things we have a dashboard we have seven and a half million patients in our dashboard we have seven and a half million treatment plans and when we ask the question in a room um and this is one way communication but i you know i want you to ask you know i'm gonna ask this question to you how many patients are diag you know if half the patients have it how many are diagnosed out of those seven and a half million and the answer to that is pick your number eight eight percent of all patients in the u.s well the representative sample that we have is seven and a half million have been diagnosed and four have been treated so four percent of this half of america uh, are adults um, so we have a huge gap here and how do we close it well you know if you're coming from and listening tonight that this is just about money it really isn't it's really about the purpose behind it you know this is about getting america healthy this is about making a more profound difference yes you end up making more dollars and we call it million dollar hygiene so that we just don't have hygienists here tonight because we love our hygienists the hygienists are the are the are the engine that makes this work but if the dentist is not aligned with whole body health and understanding that this is a vital aspect of you know whole body health and complete health dentistry if he or she doesn't drive the business model that the hygienist works inside of then it, you're not going to reach that so it really takes an entire team especially a doctor and a hygienist aligned with this philosophy and you asked uh, the question where what are the benchmarks for a, a million dollar hygiene department well first of all case acceptance um, you know ideally you know you can either have um, assisted hygiene or you can have um, you know a single you know single column hygiene and either way it works you just want to have your case acceptance coming out of hygiene so when you're presenting care using control cameras you're educating the patient 67 percent of case acceptance coming out two-thirds a third will no matter what a third won't no matter what and the third in the middle we're going to give you the five-step healthy patient blueprint that gets you to have two-thirds of your your patients accept treatment in hygiene and uh, pre points are big you know the average year we look for a 90 when we first start working it's 52 percent 52 percent of patients are pre-appointed when i ask this question to most practitioners they say oh it's 80 or the hygienist they say 80 but it's you know really on the average of 52 percent it's very interesting um, the reality because so many people slip through the cracks and uh, here's what we know it takes 10 times more energy to re-engage a patient that doesn't have the integrity of and responsibility of an appointment when they leave so it's a big deal uh, where patients are lost parent maintenance um, like I said we're at eight diagnosed four treated we want to see it more around 35% of your patient base of adults 
um, you know, again, about one third. And then retention, meaning the patient comes back twice through your hygiene department. 80% of your patients come, you know, back twice. What we're finding is when we first start working with people, when they start having this, they'll usually say, oh, it's 80, but it's actually around 20 some percent. So it's very interesting that when you get these benchmarks and you start understanding them and look deep inside them, you really plug a lot of holes that really affect your whole practice, not just your hygiene department. So let's get into the formula. There's four weeks off and you should at least take four weeks off. We like eight weeks better, but I, I'll do four weeks. If you take four, four weeks off, that's 48 weeks out of the year. Four days a week, you should work no more than four days a week. If you are, please call us and make sure that we get you off that, that crazy schedule. Um, and some people like working that, but we like 48 weeks, four days, 192 days. And we, where Tanya and I um, started this, it, it was a little practice in Hayes, Kansas. You know, if you're out there in a big city or if you're in a rural area, this, this was born in a rural practice in the middle of Kansas. And um, for the first time ever, we had two hygienists who did $300,000 each. And so, you know, we were working with them and then all of a sudden they just hit this new level and we went in and dissected it, made sure we codified it so that we can bring it to the masses. And so we're grateful for the team in Hayes, Kansas for um, following these protocols, but actually reaching a level that, you know, we never knew that we could ever reach. In fact, tonight I'm going to give you um, a free copy of my, my book, Million Dollar Dentistry, which outlines everything that I'm discussing here. Think about it. Uh, I mean, it's in the seventh uh, edition. I wrote Million Dollar dentistry 12 years ago and now we're talking about million dollar hygiene so you know so often we can't foresee what's possible when we're looking out but here we are million dollar hygiene and we're we're actually doing this across the u.s it's amazing so the daily goal if uh you know if you divide 192 into 300 you get to 15 62 50 we just roll it up to 1600 a day and if you have 800 patients, uh, I mean, eight, 800, eight patients a day, um, you're looking at 195 or, you know, 200, 200, uh, $200 uh, per patient. So you might be saying, well, how do we get there? Well, um, you know, we're going to deepen that today. Uh, and so you can see how we're going to be able to get there. Um, and uh, the revenue per hygienist is 300. We like to see um, retention where you have two full-time hygienists per doctor. So if you have two doctors who want to have four hygiene. Um, so it's one to two ratio. So that means that if you have two hygienists doing 300 each, that's 600,000. And then the restorative care minimally that comes out of your care is uh, 400,000 or $1 million. And that's how we get to the million dollar um, hygiene department. Tanya, Gary, can, yeah, yeah, can we stay here for just a second? Because this hits so many of the questions that people had early on. Um, so successful hygiene department, you were looking at number of days, but also $1,600 is your daily goal. This is what you yep. had on the last slide. And yep. to be able to get there, you're looking at about eight patients a day. So when yep. when do you add a hygienist? How do you grow this? How So on your next slide, you had one dentist and two hygienists. One of the questions was, when, when do you know you should add a hygienist? Yeah, well, one one of the things that we found is, and this this practice that we're talking about now is up to their third hygienist, and it's because they have a good retention program. We're going to talk about the three ways to build the practice, and you, if if the average uh, hygienist can do fifteen hundred um, appo appointments a year, you know, right when you get around six hundred more patients, it's about every six hundred to seven hundred fifty patients, depending on how you do new, your new patient system. If you send your new patients through hygiene. You know, so it depends on how many new patients you're getting, but anywhere around every 600 to 750 patients is when you start bringing in another hygienist. But, but then that begs the question, when do you add another doctor? Because I know that this particular practice that has one doctor and three hygienists is kind of bursting at the seams. And if you are working five days a week or six days a week, and you want to be able to get to that three or four day a week, bringing in an associate is a good way to do it. And Gary, I don't know anybody else who does that better than, than you and your team. Um, when when do you recommend that they add a new doctor? Well, I always like, you know, I always look at the recare visits. So if you have to be in a recare visit, especially if you're, you really should only spend five minutes at each recare visit. When you have to spend five, five and five and you get into 15 minutes where you need to be back at your chair for a full hour, that's when it gets a little dicey. I mean, I have guys and gals that are pretty fast and they can do it. But right when you start getting to the threshold of, you know, into a third hygienist, if you don't have rockstar hygienists that can get you in and out quickly, um, 
then, you know, it's very difficult to start adding hygiene after, I mean, you want to start looking at when you add that third hygienist, you want to bring your associate in. And what this does is this allows the associate to pick up more of the bread and butter dentistry. If you have a good case acceptance system, which we're going to outline tonight, so you don't get that associate cliff. See, that's where you got to avoid. You don't want that associate cliff where you're sending your associate in. They only diagnose what they can treat so that your, your pool of diagnostics go smaller and the confidence of that associate is not the confidence of the founding doctor and actually the opposite happens. So that's why it's so important to build this million dollar hygiene department because the hygienists hold the space and hold that associate up and you have this beautiful transition of profitability when you add your associate. So that's the other reason not just to, to make a million dollars out of your hygiene department and get your patients healthier um, but also to transition to an associate. All right, everybody. We, I mean, we really do spend a lot of time on this in our day course, but we're going to move on here. Um, thanks, Gary. You bet. And so, you know, so often, you know, having a million dollar practice, you can't do that without owning your numbers. And I'll just use, I'll use weight. I'll use weight as an example. See where you land inside of your relationship to numbers. Denial means I'm, I'm going to use my weight. I want to lose weight. Oh yeah, I want to lose weight, but I have no clue how much I'm weighing. I haven't seen a scale in 10 years. That's denial. Then there's committee. Oh, yeah, I got to lose weight. You're talking about losing weight. You're in a committee about it to your spouse, your husband, your wife, your kids. You, you're just talking about losing weight. And then you get into knowing. Uh, you, you weigh yourself. You know how many calories you're taking in. You know how many you're burning. You, you, you know. Owning is drinking shakes, being on a keto diet. You actually know your numbers, but you also have your actions in causation. So, um, you, you know, that's, you know, just see where you land. And really, in order to get to a million dollar hygiene department, you have to be in owning your numbers, meaning knowing what they are and knowing how to be at cause. But what are you being at cause at? And that's what we're going to look at tonight. There's three things you're going to be at cause at. It's, it's called our care system. These are the three ways you build, a, you build a practice. Case acceptance, increasing your case acceptance, retention, making sure that patients come back at least twice to your hygiene department. and then the experience and acquisition of the new patient. So you have a new patient system, a patient through uh, a system through hygiene, and then you have to have a case acceptance system so that you can create value, overcome the objections, and, and have a patient invest in treatment. And those are the three ways when you focus on these three systems, you can build a million dollar practice. Let's see what your capacity is inside your practice. Now, we're gonna do this like a workbook, so take out a pen and paper, or take out your calculator. It's simple math that I'm gonna run through. When you have a good case acceptance system, the average adult will invest in the value of a crown to build up. See, it doesn't mean that we're gonna be in a crown factory. It just means that that's the restorative care fee schedule that you can now put into that number. So let's just say PPO fees. Let's figure PPO fees of a crown, let's call it um, 800 and a build up is 200 and your case acceptance is 1,000. So now let's get your attention again two pro fees, let's call it, um, you know, uh, 150, uh, two exams, 100, 250, and a set of bite wings, 50. Let's call it $300 for retention. So if we take case acceptance at 1,000, retention at 300, we're looking at the average annual value of a patient in a PPO uh, practice, focusing in on retention and case acceptance is $1,300. If you take the value of one patient, coming back twice through hygiene, investing in the value of a crown to build up when they're in that hygiene visit, then you now have $1,300 times, let's just call it 1,000 patients. Everybody has 1,000 patients. If not, you have a marketing uh, opportunity for yourself. So 1,300 times 1,000 is 1.3 million. This practice, Tanya, as you know, um, we go in and it's right around 600,000. It's underperforming by half. And this is why your biggest expense, which is your payroll, is so high because the case acceptance benchmark and the retention benchmark is not performing to the degree it needs to. So hopefully that was helpful for you to start seeing that you already have everything under your roof. Now here's your next problem. And I love this picture, Tanya, it's my favorite. <laughs> Does anybody have a problem with implementation out there? And usually Tanya, what is that answer? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You know, they come see us on a Friday and we rock them out and they get excited and they're like, we're doing this. And then they go back and Monday happens. This is the business model problem that you have. See, here's the problem we're facing in dentistry. If you've ever wondered why you haven't been able to implement, the doctor and the practice owner wants to grow and the team doesn't want to lose their job. So when you introduce something new to them that threatens them making a mistake, 
now all of a sudden you have two people playing you have a dentist and a practice owner playing golf and you're playing on the play the playground of a football field there's no hole to hit your ball in so how do we fix this it's called the game board now I always ask the question, if you could pick anything, any piece on a chess game, what piece would you pick? Everybody picks the queen, and I got you beat because I picked the game board. See, when you create a game board in your practice, you tell the players, your team members, how to move. And when they know how to move, you don't have to, you know, keep telling them over and over what you have to do. And the other thing we need to do is bring the currency of the amount of time and money that the doctor wants to make mapped out to how much you want to do annually, monthly, daily, and then key. By position so how do we do that and I just use two million dollar practice here I know catapult has a lot of high-end one percenters so I used two million dollars here so if you want to collect two million you write 10% off you have to do 2.2 million now doctors if you want to take more time off you uncollapse time and money so this is the formula for actually if you want this is six weeks off 184 days and let's say you're gonna give your your hygienist um, they're gonna be take four weeks off and you have two hygienists so um, it's 384. So if you take uh, your hygiene goal, and we believe it's 1,600, you know, a complete health hy uh, hygienist should be at 1,600 times 384 days. That's $614,000 coming out of hygiene. If you subtract that from the 2.2 million of production you're going to do, you're now at 1.585. If you divide that by the number of days you're going to work, which is 184, you now have 8617 per day. That now becomes the doctor's daily primary outcome. Now, here's one of the biggest missings that doctors miss. They need to present enough per day in, at a conversion rate of 67% in order to equal their production per day. Because if you don't present enough per day at a conversion rate that you know you can count on, it doesn't end up downstream. So what you present in June is, is what's gonna land in July on your schedule. So this is how you get peace of mind and, and how you're able to go away on vacation with peace of mind because you're taking care of the case presented on the front end and knowing how it's gonna show up. So now what we have are daily primary outcomes for hygiene, for doctor, and for treatment coordinator. So now we wanna talk about, Tanya, those questions That's right. uh, that came up here. So what are some of the questions and I wanna highlight them here and get their answers. So one of the questions that was key was how do you compensate a hygienist? And yeah. you've got ideas, you've got, I mean, you have a complete formula for how to help um, compensate everyone. You bet. So we're going to, we're going to focus in on the, uh, hy we call them hygienists. So you might look at these names and you're like, what is all this? <laughs> well, we, we changed people's relationship to their work so that they have confidence and they have spirit related to what we need them to do. So we used to have appointment coordinators, now we have DOFIs, and DOFIs are directors of first impressions. Directors of first impressions, they create an experience for people on the phone and when they're greeted, and because the context set, that's how they do it. This person we, you know, is now doing $9,000 a day for the doctor, 1,600 a day for each hygienist, and now all of a sudden that bonus, they get bonused each day that they hit that. A financial freedom fighter, fighter is a treatment coordinator, presenting 13,000 at 67% conversion, or netting out $9,000 a day in case acceptance. And then we have our ninjas. No, I'm not just an assistant is the acronym because they really matter in all this. And they produce $9,000 a day. And all of a sudden their behaviors change because they're getting paid when the outcome of $9,000 gets hit. And by the way, this is all detailed in the book, the free book that you're gonna be able to get at the end of this session. The hygienists, See, our hygienists, they're not hygienists, they're not scraping teeth, they're not doing bloody profies. They are advocates for whole body health. They're the only practitioner, Tanya, that sees a patient two full hours a year. So they could become an advocate and really be an educator for whole body health. When this hygienist, now here's the compensation plan. When they hit $1,600 per day, everything above that, they get 10% of. So you know, for, if they do 2,000 for the day, that's a $400 difference times 10%, $40 extra per day. So what that does is it helps the, helps the hygienist generate more income than what is expected of them on a daily basis. But here's the other way you compensate your hygienist on the treatment that comes out of his or her room each day. And they should get 1% because if they do a great job with the relationship that they have, and I'm gonna show you the five-step process that we train them to use, 
their case acceptance can be amazing. If they're presenting, again, two hygienists presenting 6,500 goes back to equaling $13,000 per day. So really, when you really look at it, they're not presenting a ton of dentistry, but when they both do that as benchmarked in equivalent to what's healthy, what you have deemed healthy, I'm not telling you to generate dentistry that's not needed. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm establishing benchmarks so that you can now have a solid practice at cause rather than just hoping and praying that it turns out. So any questions here? So there are a couple questions. I just want to encourage people. Um, we are going to make these slides available and as soon as the recording goes live on Friday you'll have the option to download some of the slides so you don't have to like screenshot everything or, or take these rapid notes. Um, Gary's giving you tons of information all at once. Um, Gary, we did have a question about keeping a good retention rate with recall, um, recare, and I, do you want to tackle that now or do you want to hit it later? Let's hit it later because um, okay. I, I think it'll be answered through um, what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so again, again, we're looking at, we just looked at the business model. Now let's deepen the science. Tanya, please. Thank you. Um, so at Perio Protect, we're on a mission. We call it Mission Possible, the end game for Perio, because you can get just such better outcomes for your patients, not just in the immediate uh, treatment phase, but long term. This is where Perio Protect is. If you're not familiar, just to give you an overview, the problem that we have here is that these bacterial communities, and a biofilm is just a bacterial community, gets deep below the gums. Uh, if it's deeper than you know, three millimeters, your patients cannot reach it with toothbrush, rinse, or floss. Even if they have the best technique, brushing or flossing, it's not gonna get deep enough. So the tray is simply an excellent home care tool that will gently deliver medication deep into the periodontal pocket, hold it there long enough for the medication to fight the infection. Our primary medication is hydrogen peroxide. It's the primary antimicrobial. Um, when you deliver it in this tray, and you can see how precisely this tray fits, um, you can deliver that medication as deep as nine millimeters. And where the science meets the business here is when you prescribe a set of trays for a maintenance patient who's struggling, and you all have maintenance patients who are struggling, we all do, you're gonna hit your daily, um, your daily outcome measures in the hygiene chair so easily, but look at what you can do for your patient. This is just six months. The only thing that they did differently was add prescription tray delivery of hydrogen peroxide gel. Another case example, a little more severe here on the top, this is a patient who's extremely phobic, hasn't been to the dentist in six years. The before and after there on this top from Dr. Buttenmeyer in Tulsa is six months difference. This is using trays, super gingival debridement, scaling, and then four months of maintenance. Um, and this, the, the thing about the tray, it is just an excellent home care tool. If you have gingivitis, your tray will work beautifully and then you can continue to use it. The benefits of it are going to be fresh breath, whiter teeth. But if you have chronic periodontitis, this tray is as important as a toothbrush. Um, and because it handles what you see right here, this is biofilm from a scanning electron microscope. And it's really difficult to treat. When we have a bacterial induced infection, everybody wants to treat it with antibiotics. The problem is that biofilms, the community, resist antibiotics, they're refractory. And this is true for chronic periodontitis and all chronic biofilm-based infections, chronic sinusitis, chronic inner ear infections, chronic bladder infections. The, the biofilm itself can resist um, antibiotics. And you can have a positive benefit from an antibiotic, but it tends to be temporary. This is why when you have a chronic sinus infection, you might have to take rounds and rounds of antibiotics. So tonight I invite you to give serious consideration to hydrogen peroxide as an excellent broad spectrum antimicrobial agent for your patients. We've tested a lot of gels. Um, the one that tests over and over again well is Periogel. It has 1.7% hydrogen peroxide. FDA has approved this drug as an oral debriding agent and an oral wound cleanser. Um, and just think about, I mean, what, what you're treating here with chronic perio are chronic oral wounds. It is an excellent choice because nobody's allergic to hydrogen peroxide. We are all making hydrogen peroxide in our liver right now. Bacteria do not build up resistances to hydrogen peroxide the way they can to antibiotics. And then hydrogen peroxide has three excellent antimicrobial actions. One, it will cut through 
it'll oxidize the slime layer, the matrix. So there's a physical barrier called the matrix that will that is slimy and gooey and very hard to penetrate. It'll cut through that. Secondly, it will debride bacterial cell walls. Um, hydrogen peroxide works as an oxidizing agent by breaking down protein chains. And a bacterial cell wall is essentially a series of proteins. Gary, could you go back just one, please? Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yep, great, thanks. Um, so it'll, it will debride the bacterial cell wall. And then, so essentially you're gonna kill bacteria and you don't really need to know what's down there because it's gonna kill, it'll kill gram-negative obligate anaerobes, it'll take, kill facultative, it'll kill gram-positive, it'll kill aerobic. However, it's never, you're never gonna be able to sterilize the pocket and you don't want to. What happens when you're debriding these bacterial cell walls and killing bacteria, when you take the tray out of your mouth, the bacteria repopulate. Then that brings in the importance of oxygen therapy. Hydrogen peroxide is releasing oxygen gas as it bubbles up. The oxygen changes the microenvironment of the periodontal pocket so that when your bacteria repopulate, you tend to have healthy bacteria that repopulate at the expense of the pathogens. Because the tray has a seal and an extension system, that seal and extension system works like a gasket. It will, and it will, the tray itself can deliver medication and hold it as, into a pocket as deep as nine millimeters. But because it's holding it in there with that gasket-like seal, as it releases, as the peroxide releases the gas, it's bubbling up and releasing gas, it's increasing the pressure inside the tray. Oxygen under pressure will induce neovascularization. You'll have some new capillary beds form. And that's key because then you're exposing the sites of infection to, to oxygenated blood. And it's also true that oxygen will help create the right environment for your white blood cells to function more effectively. This is a good indication. This is a salivary diagnostic test. It's a good indication of the kind of results you can expect when you combine scaling with prescription trays. And just so you know, prescription trays are always adjunctive at home therapy to be used between office visits as an adjunct to scaling or surgery or laser, uh, maybe laser assisted surgery when that is called for. So here's a good example of a patient with scaling and trays. This again is another good example of scaling and trays. And those are log scales, everybody, 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth, 10 to the sixth. Um, when you drop down even one, one, one log from 10 to the sixth to 10 to the fifth, that's a huge reduction. All right, let's look at how to do it. Uh, one of our questions tonight was, do you have protocols who are good candidates? This is the easiest protocol. This is for folks who are in maintenance or you've just scaled and you wanna make sure that you're gonna get the best results possible and maintain those results. You need a fresh probing chart. You can take impressions. We accept everything, including digital scans, everything except alginate substitutes. Deliver your trays approximately three weeks later. Your patients are gonna start twice a day at 15 minutes. 10 minutes is good, 15 is best. You get all of the oxygen benefits at, 10, at 15 minutes. And then most patients you're gonna be able to drop down to one time a day. Let's take a look at, a, at an example here. This is a patient, um, this, patient, this case comes from Dr. Gordon Frazier at Conyers, Georgia. This is the day of LENAP surgery, laser-assisted new attachment procedure. The next slide are the, are the results. These are good results. This is three months later. It was after this image was taken that perio trays were delivered, used twice a day for six weeks. If you see these in sequence, um, so this is the day trays were delivered. This is the day of surgery. If you see them in sequence from top to bottom, then you'll see it here and you can see the improvement. Right, this obviously in April, the surgical improvement was nice, but just look what you get in just six weeks of tray therapy twice a day, drop down to one time a day, you should be able to maintain these gains that you got with surgery forever, pretty much. Another kind of case that is, um, another kind of patient candidate are those you've done these res restorations around. Doctors, some of you do the most beautiful cosmetic and restorative work. Don't you want your gingival foundation to secure it? The difference between the before and after images here is one month of perio tray therapy. All right, anyone who has a systemic inflammatory condition, and these are just samples, they are excellent candidates for perio protect, for prescription tray therapy. Um, for those folks, you might pre-treat with localized here with perio trays um, in order to get the infection under better control before you do any kind of mechanical or surgical procedure. So this is your second periodontal protocol. And you would use this protocol with trays first, even before scaling, when you wanna work with the healthiest tissue possible in scaling, 
when you have super fearful patients, when you have patients who've had scaling or surgery before and are refusing it, or they have a systemic inflammatory condition. So for the first two weeks, they use the trays three to four times a day. This is a lot, which is why we keep it li limited to two weeks, but we know from controlled clinical trials that two weeks is a good period of time. You can see bleeding reduced by about half, 50%, 5-0, and you can begin to see some reductions in pocket probing depth scores even before you do anything mechanical or surgical. Three to four times a day, 10 minutes if they're short on time, 15 if they've got it. The number of time, the frequency is actually more important than the duration. Then scaling starts. Once you are between scaling appointments, uh, they drop down to twice a day, right after the first one. And then you would keep that up until recare or if you're doing quads to the last, the last quad. Um, and then most of your patients can go down to one time a day surgery. Our goal is to avoid surgery for the patient whenever possible, but it's not always possible. So we say we're gonna minimize it when we can. This is an excellent case because it shows the benefits of using tray therapy first. Um, this case comes from Dr. Tim Pronger in Alton, Illinois. This patient walked in off the street, brand new patient, huge abscess tooth. You could see it uh, just looking at him from a few feet away. He was in tremendous pain. Dr. Pronger said, if I can get you numb, I'll fit you in the schedule. And while he's waiting to see if the patient can, can get numb, he sees what you see here. And he says to the patient, and you've got some bone loss, it's not awful yet, but he says to the patient, if we don't treat this, you're at a higher risk for a heart attack or stroke. And the patient is 34 years old, and he says, I already have had a heart attack. And he says, you're also at risk for type 2 diabetes. And he says, I've had type 2 diabetes. So he accepts treatment. Uh, the chart was taken when number the day 18 was extracted, so you want to wait till that extraction site heals before you take your impression. They delivered trays a few weeks later, four times a day this patient agreed to, and he did it about three or four self-reportedly. Um, we asked that you do that for at least two weeks. They did it for a month. And in this case, Dr. Pronger is using periotray therapy as pretreatment. Brought him back in after a month, then had him continue to use the trays at home for a month until scaling was scheduled towards the end of September. And then um, recare was in November, and then you can see perio maintenance. Now look, this is just before on the left, after one month on the right. The next image, the next slide is really beautiful because you see what happens. Look at that tissue improvement already in just a month. And you see how the calculus is starting to pit and you're seeing, you've seen less of it already. That is because hydrogen peroxide is modifying the calculus, it makes it softer. Hydrogen peroxide works by breaking down protein chains and calculus is essentially a skeleton of protein. When you use the tray therapy first, it'll soften that calculus, make it much easier to remove with your toothbrush even. Although if, of course if it's subgingival, you still have to go get it. And that's gorgeous, look at the stippling already. So what was really, really exciting, and we don't get to see this too often in the dental office, this patient was diabetic, totally out of control. If you are healthy, your long-term blood sugar indicator measured by HGBA1C should be 5.6 or less. If you're diabetic, it should, you know, they like it around seven or less. He's out of control at 9.3. So he's getting his HGBA1C monitored more regularly. And after two months of tray therapy and getting that infected tooth extracted, that matters, the A1C drops from a 9.3 to a 5.8. And the only thing the patient did differently was change um, his oral health. This is really exciting. And then when you see on the next set of charts, um, this comes from the November recare after scaling. So red diamonds are bleeding points. And I just wanna point out, these are uh, VoiceWorks charts from Florida Probe. One of you had a question about, you know, do you recommend assisted hygiene or not? If you have assisted hygiene, great, but if you don't and you're contemplating it, um, I encourage you to check out Florida Probe VoiceWorks and just let me know in a question that you want them to contact you or you want me to send you a video to show how this works. This is such a beautiful chart. Um, we recommend that offices use this kind of as a report card. And it's really easy to explain to people where they're bleeding with the red diamond. So he still has some scattered bleeding, but this is so much improved. So this is five weeks after scaling finished. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? This is what we want for patients. And then if you continue to see, we were able to follow this patient out. Dr. Pronger sold his practice, so I'm not able to get too much further out, but his HGBA1C stays low for a year. Now, if that does not bring you professional satisfaction. I don't know what will. This is really, really exciting. And then we were able to get one last set of charts and pictures. This is from 18 months in. He's down to two bleeding points. 
And you see a couple of four millimeter pockets, but everything else is pretty stable and steady. And the crown is added. This happens a lot uh, in cases that I see a crumb across my desk. Get the gingival foundation healthy, get the trust of the patient established, patient satisfaction is so high um, when they've had this kind of success that they'll do the restorative work that they need. And again, this is 18 months in, so good long-term results. The side effects of prescription tray therapy with hydrogen peroxide is eliminating foul odors that are associated with perio. This happens fast. If you have patients you can smell from across the room or smell before you see, if they use prescription tray therapy, you can knock that out in just days, like three or four days. It is a fabulous side effect. And the second side effect, of course, is whitening. Um, if you have a lot of anterior restorations, this could be a problem. But for most people, this is such a nice side effect. There are no eating or drinking restrictions. It's a really pretty gradual white. And this particular patient is kind of, he was a fun patient for me. He's 68 years old and he was so proud of his teeth that he brought many referrals to his periodontist. But check out those gums. Those are gums of a teenager. I want my gums to look like that when I'm 68. Yeah. Um, if you're in network or you just to document or you're helping patients uh, send in insurance, D5994 is your code, 01 maxillary, 02 mandibular. It's for a periodontal medicament carrier with an internal peripheral seal laboratory processed. Uh, usually it's 50%, but you can also, if your patient policy does not include this, um, you can also uh, use the fee for prescription trays, the cost for prescription trays uh, towards your flexible spending account as long, patients can, as long as you all have diagnosed gingivitis or periodontitis. Um, my contact information should be coming up next. If you want training, this is a great way to get a hold of us. You can just email me directly and we'll have a special offer for you at the end. Gary, I'm gonna turn it over to you so you can talk about practice revenue opportunity. You bet, thank you, Tanya. Tanya is just amazing. Um, this is uh, an example of how we can turn something so profound. And the thing I love about PeriProtect is it puts the power of complete health dentistry in the hands of the dentist and the hygienist, and the and it just translates into dollars. Uh, one case a week has been the benchmark uh, that you could see how how quickly that that generates revenue. Um, we have we had a breakthrough this year, this first quarter. Um, uh, practice in Illinois is doing one case per day, one case out of eight per day, getting the hygienist to become a hygienist, getting the whole system uh, mm -hmm. that we're talking about, and um, the, the patient education system that we're going to be talking about next. But you can see how quickly the revenue generates. And, you know, the average case uh, is somewhere around 750 to 800. The profitability is incredible with Paraprotect. You know, let's just say it's 250. So, and most of the, the the care is done through hygiene. So, it's really a highly profitable win-win-win um, all the way around for the patient, for the uh, the specific team member, and uh, and the doctor. Um, this is Dr. D from San Diego. Just started 12 months ago, um, and you can see the revenue here. It, it gets it gets going pretty quickly. Um, and really allows you that daily primary outcome to be hit. Dr. Uh, Dr. L in Kansas, uh, and this is after many, many years of being a perio, uh, perio protect uh, office. So Dr. D Dr. Williams, same here. You can see the revenue um, gets pretty exponential pretty quickly um, as, as a nice uh, service that really makes a profound difference for the patient and uh, for the practice. Um, my my favorite quote is information plus sustainable implementation changes many lives. And that's why we decided as a company to really focus and be obsessed with how to get implementation because implementation is an art and a science and being able to do it effectively really makes a profound difference. And Gary, can, can I interrupt Tanya, you? Tanya, we had sorry. some of the questions about... Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say the kind of results that you just showed for those three dental practices are not typical with PeriProtect. They're typical with offices that work with you. Um, tip, what you typically see with PeriProtect is a takeoff over nine months, right? Because you're putting most of you've got this huge pool of patients already in recare, and a lot of them are excited to have this opportunity. But in order to sustain those kind of results that the practices you just saw did, it requires that you have this step-by-step -step implementation system. So let's put, I just want to put it into context that those three offices work with next level practice. 
um, and that this, the implementation is so key. You bet, and I think so often, Tanya, um, when doctors, doctors think like, oh, it's just that one tool, it's that one system, it's that one gem, that one pearl, that one nugget, and those are content things. We work in context, and so setting up a complete health practice, putting in the business model, and now moving toward implementing a million dollar hygiene department, this is the keystone and the key element. You know, we don't believe in doing a thousand gems, pearls, and nuggets and moving them an inch. We believe in mastering patient education through this five-step healthy patient blueprint. These, these simple steps are applied to the new patient system. The new patient system has a little bit more, but that this is the core of the new patient system. This is the core of the retention system, and this is the core of the case acceptance system. So there's there's a way to engage the patient. And I wanna just talk about, I'm gonna do it in reverse reverse engineering. Fitting the treatment into the lifestyle is removing money as a barrier for the patient, right? When, when you do the four steps before, the patient comes to you and says, how, how do I pay for this? Because I know I need it so badly. See, we always find the time and money for things we need. Now, the next thing is my favorite, the trust transfer. So often, how doctors and team members out there, how often have you said the patients, you know, was, you thought was closed in the back and then they go up to the front and then they're up front and they go, no, nah, I, don't, I don't think I want to schedule or like they just kind of walk through. We call that the hallway. They have to walk through the hallway of amnesia. You know, they say yes in the back and then they go past room five, four, three, two, one. And they get to the front and they go, I don't know. What is this? I don't, I don't know what happened. They get all confused, confused buyer buys nothing. And then they leave. So and then before that, if you don't highlight the problem, the consequence and be quiet and have the patient come to you then um, what happens is this is why it feels like selling to people. So we set people up, and, and I'm going to go through this briefly. The healthy mouth baseline is the key to all of this. Without a healthy mouth baseline, without establishing what health is in your practice, without getting an agreement and the whole team on board, it's very difficult to actually increase your case acceptance, have patients truly understand why they should come back for that hygiene appointment, because so often they're breaking and canceling those appointments, don't charge your patients. Get to the root cause of health and root cause of why they don't show up for that appointment is because they don't value it. And then personal motivator. We had a, a, a client out just uh, a couple of days ago just called me and said, Gary, when I first started this, I had three Google reviews. I hate social media. I'm not a social media guy. I'm not a review guy. I know it's important, but I don't know how to do it. He goes, I woke up. I just implemented the system. We started treating our patients really well. And they automatically went on there. And I have five-star Google reviews. Why? Because he followed this system. And you'll, genu you'll start generating acknowledgments for your work because you're caring for people on a deeper level. So one of the key elements is having what we call a complete health medical history. It's where you have family hist history tied to it. Um, so often um, now, especially with 23andMe and, and genetics, and um, people are actually understanding, like, my my mom and dad, my mom has dementia, my dad has cardiovascular disease, eight stents, quintuple bypass. And if you if you um, tie in and you ask me about my family history and then you find out what is most important to me, like health, um, well, I'm going to do whatever it takes not to be like my parents. So very important to really start with. The question isn't what's bothering you, what's hurting you, what brings you in today. It's Let's take a look at your health and how you interface with the medical history form is tell me about how you feel about like your grandfather passing a pancreatic cancer and like your dad having cardiovascular disease. Are you concerned about that? That's how you interface with this. Or you're taking this medication. What do you, what, how do you feel about taking all this medication? Well, it does this, it has dry, it makes my mouth dry. Great. Well, yeah, it affects your dentistry as well. And so, you know, now all of a sudden you're having health conversations, not symptomatic solving molar jockey and gum gardening conversations. I thought that was pretty funny, Tanya. <laughs> it is pretty funny. Yeah, right? <laughs> so this is a healthy mouth baseline. This is the president of the oral systemic, the academy of the former, former president of the Academy of Oral Systemic Health, AASH. And um, really here, a healthy mouth protects your brain, heart, and general health. These are checks and balances. Now this becomes more of a report card and you're letting your patients know, and you're now the advocate and authority on whole body health. And you're saying these are the things that allow you to be healthy. And now, you know, if you look at sleep, if you're looking at acid reflux, now all of a sudden, 
this is the trigger where the patient is co-creating that, oh, these are important things for my, 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 my body and the dentist and the dental team are the best ones to take care of this stuff. So, so Gary, let's stay here for just a minute because it is so easy to overlook the importance of this. This is the tool that helps the entire team understand the philosophy of the practice. This is the tool that helps the team understand who is a candidate for certain treatment. This is the tool um, that is really easy to use to help patients stay engaged with treatment and this is how you help retain your patients. Can you talk a little bit about retention here? Yeah, what happens is here, what, and I was just, I went to the next slide uh, quickly, too quickly here. Um, see, when patients really understand the value, I, I guess I always use this as an example. My wife, I would observe my wife and she would never miss her hair coloring appointment. Tanya, you know, Judith, you know, whenever those roots were I know were myself, showing, Gary. All right, you're set. Well I, could, well, I don't have your permission to use you, so I have my wife's permission. And when she has a root showing, it's like, Gary, get out of my way. I go, honey, why don't you cancel that that hair coloring appointment? She's like, I'm never going to cut, cancel that appointment. And so I like behavioral psychology. I really study it, um, consumer behavior. And when I saw my wife, I'm like, that was a no miss appointment, or going to get a massage or a facial, no miss appointments. What are the inherent um, attributes of like the emotional thing that why she's going well it's visual it's tangible and it has an impact on the emotional well-being of an individual and so when you now educate from a whole body health perspective the patient understands the value like it's not just a nice thing to do to go to your hygiene visit it is like when you tie it to that the conditions of their health if you like if I know you know that my health is connected to that visit at my hygienist when I'm making that the buying decision whether to go to that appointment or not, I go. So it becomes like something very, you know, root cause of a person's drive behind why they're showing up for that appointment. It's so for, so so important. And I have a video next, and I, I'm not sure if I should show it. Should I go for it? Should I really take a risk? You can try it. Let's go for How it. How we, we keep introducing our healthy mouth baseline. This is so vital for your practice. This is so important. It has so much great information for every patient. And this is constantly changing because each appointment is different. On the back, we actually have some healthy facts here. How your mouth talks to your body and your body talks to your mouth. Here are some true statistics. People actually use this and educate their friends and family and take this home. This is how we're getting San Diego to be the number one healthiest city in the United States by 2022. Jenna here. Had a beautiful blood pressure of 120 over 80, pulse 65. I really make it personal for their own benefit. Here's her next appointment. We talked about her gums. We did some laser today. I, did, uh, I took some impressions for perio trays. She has a uh, cavity on number 18. We need to replace that with a crown. She is clenching and grinding, so we need to get her a night guard to be preventative so we don't have to do any more. Um, be preventative so we don't have any fractures in the future. She does have experienced some dry mouth lately, and so I'm going to prescribe her some Nutricel. So please use this every patient, every time. It has so many benefits, and it makes it personal for the patient. It makes them not want to say, hey, I get this every single time. No, this is theirs to take home and to educate others. Thank you. So, Tanya? I'm here, Gary. We have this opportunity. We do. So if you're interested in Paraprotect training, um, it's $2.99 and you get your first case free. You can just call the number or you can email me directly. Um, we've got quite a few questions coming in and I'm going to, I'll handle those, but I just want to encourage everybody. The training's important. The implementation is key. You bet. And then we have one offer here. Um, I couldn't cover all of the five steps and, and so much more. Uh, so I just chose to give you a free copy of my uh, million dollar dentistry. It has million dollar hygiene elements inside of there. You just, all you have to do is in your text, just put 678-506-7543 and then just put the code. You don't have to write code, just put MDD and you will get uh, a text version of million dollar dentistry right to your phone so you can read it. Or if you would like more information, you can call my office. Johanna's standing by right now. Uh, she's at 212-388-1712 extension 111. She's my colleague. She's amazing. And making sure that um, 
you can get all your questions answered if there's any other elements or if you'd like to know how we work with people, she can answer those questions. She's also at Joanna at Next Level Practice. All right, Gary, we got some questions coming in. I'm going to cover a couple of them because they duplicate. Um, can you use perio trays on ortho patients? Not over brackets and it's not easy while teeth are still moving. We recommend, if possible, to wait. Um, I, very, very few cases. I can think of less than five uh, since 2005 when we started where uh, the disease got so bad that brackets were removed, treated first, and then they finished up. Typically, you do it after um, orthodontics. And then not only will you have the teeth right where you want them, they will be beautifully white and the gums will be that beautiful, healthy color that you want. I had a couple of questions about sensitivity. Um, is there any concern about sensitivity? And there is very, very little concern because the concentration of the peroxide is just 1.7%. Let's put that into context. 10% carbamide peroxide, which is going to be your lowest concentration for whitening, is 3.4% hydrogen peroxide. So it's half of that. The only time we really hear about uh, sensitivity from patients, and I happen to be the person who takes all of these reports for, because our product is regulated by FDA, I have to hang on to all this information. Um, the only time we hear about it is when patients have a lot of gingival recession and exposed root surfaces. In those cases, or uh, just FYI, if you've got patients with lots of crowns and they have thermal sensitivity around crowns, it works for that too. But um, in those cases, you use fluoride in this prescription perio tray. So I've only talked about hydrogen peroxide tonight. There's a, a wide uh, range of other drugs that you might also consider. This would be the most precise fitting fluoride tray you've ever used. And three 20 minute applications of, I recommend sodium fluoride. We have some folks who use Stannis, but we've had some uh, concerns about staining and also uh, tissue sloughing. So, so sodium fluoride, uh, a gel is easier, you can use a paste, but three 20 minute applications in just one day. Space them out at least an hour apart, three times 20 minutes in one day, and you are likely to knock out all kinds of sensitivity. Um, what happens when the teeth get whiter? Will it cause existing dental work to exhibit shade discrepancies? Yes, um, possibly. Your natural teeth will lighten more than the restored sites. I was just talking to an office and they were saying, yeah, but that can be good because already the natural teeth have darkened more than the restored ones did. And so this might lighten them back up. So it depends on your individual patients, but this is, uh, this is the only really negative side effect. Um, can I quit nagging my patients about flossing if um, <laughs> peroxide kills bacteria? In short, your answer is yes. Um, fl frankly, flossing is an excellent way to help address plaque and gingivitis, not periodontitis. You just can't get deep enough. Um, Michelle Huckey is a, a dentist in the Next Level Practice community, and she's, she has my favorite quote. 9% of Amer Americans claim they're flossing, and I think half of them are lying. Um, we're not saying don't floss. We're just saying it, flossing isn't going to cut it. It doesn't get deep enough. If you have periodontitis, you need prescription tray therapy to get it there. Um, if the patient is currently bleaching with hydrogen peroxide daily, then you might experience some more sensitivity. But frankly, you're not going to need to bleach anymore. And if they have sensitivity from bleaching and they just can't bleach, we got lots of patients who use PerioProtect to whiten their teeth. It's not the way we intended it, but in practice, it's the way it is. Um, so if they are bleaching with uh, regularly, then they might experience some more sensitivity. I would take out the high concentrated bleaching and just use this. It, it's going to maintain a beautiful white uh, appearance. Can you email the card to share with patients at the end of the webinar? So Gary, they're asking for your healthy mouth baseline. It would be yep. possible to email that to you. Just let us know your email, please. You can send that in. Yep. Um, what percentage of sodium fluoride gel should we use? We, we like a prescription strength, but Prevedent's 1.1% sodium fluoride. I know it's been very effective. Um, again, another question about combining custom bleaching trays. Um, it will the so custom bleaching trays are not going to look and fit the same. The question is, how do we differentiate these? Prescription perio trays are going to be very different than your customized bleaching trays. Ble bleaching trays are designed to prevent the bleach from getting access to the gingiva because it'll irritate the tissue or cause tissue damage. Perio trays are designed to keep the hydrogen peroxide deep into the periodontal pocket and to rest outside uh, against the surface uh, tissue. 
So it, it's going to be very, very different for patients. And again, if, if they've got bleaching trays, um, they don't, they really don't need them. All right, Gary, uh, punting to you, what's the best way to use a morning huddle and how do you recommend that they use it? That's uh, great. Uh, so if you remember back those daily primary outcomes, uh, we have a dashboard that it just automates everything and you can just bring it up in the morning and it'll let you know um, what we believe is it should be yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If you go to my site, nextlevelpractice.com, nextlevelpractice.com, uh, you can download the morning huddle sheet there, um, and it's in the morning huddle motivator. So we also send you a daily motivational, uh, get your headspace in the right, you and your team, get your headspace in the right air, right mindset. And then we also, you'll also get a form if you don't have a dashboard, um, you know, that's automated pulling from your Dentrix EagleSoft or Open Dental, you can do it uh, from a handwritten perspective at nextlevelpractice.com and sign up for the morning huddle motivator. And there'll be a step-by-step -step process on how to bring forth these numbers so that your team can see how effective they are getting people healthy. Great. Thank you for that. Um, the patient who, uh, not the patient, I'm sorry, the attendee who asked about that healthy mouth baseline, I just got the email, so I'll be sure to get that over to you. Great. All right, folks, we are right at the top of the hour, but I want to give you one last chance. Any additional questions? Um, we'd love to hear from you. You've got Joanna's email. You've had my email. Uh, keep up with us, please. We thank you for your time and attention tonight. You've been a great group. I really appreciate all the questions that have rolled in. Some, many of them I've just replied to privately, but um, Gary, I wanna thank you. It's always my pleasure and honor to work with you. I love your energy. I appreciate all your business acumen and that you want the best for the office and the patient. Thank you for partnering. My pleasure. Thank you, Tanya, always an honor. Good night, everyone. Good night.